I've seen it fried chickens, chitlins, steak, pork, beans, uh, so basically everything. When it's hard, it's that's what you smell. Good stuff. Yeah. Spice the seasonings. <laughs> <laughs> so forgive me, Jason. I've, I'm coming on late uh, today, so I apologize. They, uh, so what are we making today? So there's two things. We're making two things. The first one is called shakshuka, and it is a a Mediterranean dish. It's, uh, I believe, it's sort of based out of like Lebanon, Israel. It kind of came about in that way. But there's a, a hundred different versions of this, and it's very good for a quick brunch if you're going somewhere or if you just want to make it for yourself and your family at home. It's it's really easy to make. Um, all I have in here are two red bell peppers that have been diced, one white onion that has been diced, and about uh, maybe a tablespoon or so of garlic. Okay. So all I'm going to do is toss this in my pan over here Ooh. with about maybe two tablespoons of olive oil or a tablespoon, let's just say a tablespoon of olive oil. On about medium heat. The good thing about this is that you don't have to fuss with it. So I'm going to let that go for a bit and I'll go back over there and stir it because as it cooks down, it's going to start releasing liquid. So you don't really have to worry about stuff sticking. If it sticks, you got your heat on too high. And it's not it's actually not that hard to do in an iron skill because the iron heats so evenly. So it's, it's a lot easier to scorch something in an iron skillet because of the way that it heats. It radiates from the bottom to the sides. But I'm just going to let that get soft. This will be about five minutes or so. Just going to cover it. And while that is softening, scoop these over. So we're going to be, everybody pay attention because there's going to be two things happening at one time. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be a test at the end of the <laughs> So the second thing we're going to make is called, it's called Gorilla Bread. And all Gorilla Bread is is monkey bread with cream cheese stuck in each piece of biscuit dough. Uh, that's, that's the secret. And this is another one of those sort of quick and easy type things. I have two cans of just regular 10 count biscuits. You can get whatever kind you want. Preferably don't get the buttermilk because buttermilk tend to be a little crispy or crunchy. We, I just look for like if you got the flaky kind, but don't get the grands either because they're too big. I just get these little, oh. these were 79 cents each. <laughs> Because the, the trick here is just one of the things that's going to scare me to death as I pull the label. No, it's good. I hate those. All you do, really, to get this going, do you want to help me? Sure. Okay, you wash your hands. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's over there. At yeah. that sink, um, there's soap over yeah. there. That's the official hand washing oh, okay. station in our kitchen. Since we we've renovated our kitchen, we have to have a, an of, a official washing station. Yes. <laughs> Just right here in our old trusty sink. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh, he wants that kind of bowl. This kind of bowl. I ain't seen bowl. For no mm. real reason. You'll see why. Okay. It'll make more sense here. Uh, so, bowl of sugar. And cinnamon. Cinnamon. This one? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you do that? I get it. Linda, uh, uh, the shoe shaft. Yeah, the shoe yeah, you got to tell me what to do. Like, yeah, that's all right. That's, that's, okay. how, that's, how, that's, what, that's what chefs do. They yeah. tell the sous chefs what to do. Really? Okay, just keep telling All them. the time. <laughs> and you have to repeat it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. That's I what the, the movies show, at least. She keeps us running smoothly. 
At least that's my kitchen experience too. Now, <laughs> let me show you a trick of how this is going to work. Okay. So this is just cinnamon sugar. There's nothing fancy about this at all. And you can add as much or as little cinnamon as you want. You can add nutmeg. I've used pumpkin pie spice, apple pie spice, baking spice, mixed spice. You can use whatever you want in this. It's totally up to you. I just grabbed cinnamon when I walked out the door this morning. And this is just a little bit of olive oil. This will make sense here in a minute. <laughs> Start your assembly line. Okay? Oh. So, you're going to take the biscuit, you're going to flatten it out with your fingers. Mm -hmm. Just like this. Now, you can use butter, you can use olive oil, you can use hot water. I just happen to have a little bit of olive oil here. Dip your fingers in that on one side. Okay? Grab you a piece of cream cheese. Ooh. Seal it up. Now, you see what the oil's for? It's yeah. for a seal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Squish. Just like that. Is that a technical term? It is a technical term. <laughs> Squish. You're going to flip those sides. Make a little dumpling. Yep. Make a dumpling. You're going to lay it out in. Okay. Now, are you putting mm -hmm. that in? Okay. And okay. then when you're done with those 10, I'll get you 10 more. Okay. I've, I've made these ones before when I was teaching a bunch of freshmen in college how to make something quick. And I showed them at this exact way. And so one person insisted on doing biscuits, one wanted to do cinnamon, one wanted to do this, and da 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 da. It took them five I times longer to, for the four of them to do that. I'm just standing here going, What? I'm like, Are, are you not done with that yet? It's like, You couldn't work in the kitchen I worked in, they'd fire you. Check on the... Move back over to this side here. These are soft. I think I put my heat down too low. These are starting to get soft. So I just keep it covered. And then I add just a little bit of salt and pepper. They're asking what kind of cream cheese. Just Philadelphia cream cheese, just an eight ounce block. And you can use the, uh, the low fat if you want. You don't have to, but you can. It makes the same, it doesn't change anything. So at this I point, I'm just adding salt and pepper. Make this go even oh yeah, like a ravioli sealer? Ravioli yeah. crimper? Well, mine was a, a Chinese doodle. Yeah. Oh, I got you. So oh. a round ball, smashed it flat, flopped it over. Filled it up, turned it over, and then squashed it all around. That's. Yeah. So they make a crimper. They do. Yeah, ravioli crimper. Yep. I think I still had my And Jim's the official. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The reason that you want to use a mug pan <laughs> is this right here in the center, if you if you lay these flat in an eight by eight, the center will be doughy. Mm -hmm. It won't ever really cook that well. And if in order to get it to cook completely, you will end up burning the outside to get the inside done. So I, I've never made it any other way but in a mug pan. Now, I know some people use an angel food cake pan. The only problem with that is when you <laughs> When you go to turn it out, the feet on the bottom of it, it comes crashing down onto the plate and it will go everywhere. And you'll see why in a minute. I got this one at um, Home, Home Goods? Yeah, got it at Home Goods. It was $3.99. Yeah. Yeah. I use it for this and to make that uh, that bread that I made, the, 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 corn, the cornmeal yeah. the rosemary, that I've used it twice. Wait on that yeah, I think the thing of it is, is that that recipe is copyrighted. Oh. But. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I, I changed stuff in it, so it's technically not the same. 
the any smart. attorneys that may be watching this, please advise if that's, if that's <laughs> a, a possible no, or not. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you, you change the order or you change the rule of I got you. Okay. As long as it's not verbatim? Right. Okay. And what you got here? This is brown sugar and butter. A stick of butter and a cup of brown sugar. This, when we're done with the two cans of, well, getting the, the yes. dough in the buck pan in there, you pour this over the top. Okay. Of the monkey bread, that's what makes the, the caramel. Ah, gotcha. So how much brown sugar? A cup? One cup. Yep, here. Julia, I, I, I emailed these recipes. Yay! I emailed them in advance. <laughs> Whoa. They figured that was going to happen. They've been sitting out for a second. Oh, yeah. They, they, they pressurized. Right? They were ready to go. Kate, you're doing a great job. <laughs> These recipes are really easy and low maintenance, so there's not a lot of talking that has to be done. Just squish your biscuits. Squish the biscuits. Squish the biscuits. There's always one that's the one who did not Now, come. with this monkey, uh, the gorilla bread recipe, if you want to use the Grand's biscuits, you can. Just do this exact same thing. It'll fill to the top. Just make sure that you, you may have to double your cinnamon sugar or butter because you want to make sure that goes all around it. And then um, you, your cook time may be longer. Really, all you're doing here is cooking the biscuits. Thank you, man. That's all you got going. She keeps us on track. We've been lost. We've been lost. I can't keep a shaker for a minute. Oh, that's a good idea. Mr. Mr. Sarah. Bosh. It is really outstanding. Yeah. Is that fancy sitting on top of each other? Oh, yeah, they're going to have to. Yeah, because you got more. Yeah, they're going to stack them on top of each other. Mm hmm. And, um, I don't know if anybody's ever, but did you know that there's like five or six different kinds of olive oil? Yeah, what is your take on that? I, well, so they, they do, so I always get the one that says light taste. Okay. That way if I need to use it for something like this, you're not getting a hint of olive oil and it's something sweet. So do you use it for everything? Is that for everything, the light taste? Uh, uh, no. The only time I'll use that is if I'm, if I'm going to bake with it. Okay. Instead of using vegetable oil or canola oil, mm -hmm. I'll use this instead for the light taste. Because olive oil, if you get like the robust or you get just regular olive oil, it has a it has a hint, yeah, a I taste to it. Yeah, yeah, and it, and for some people it matters, some people it doesn't. Um, That's the brand. Let's see, we're in the South. We don't use olive oil. Right. We, we use, use butter, lard, butter, and lard, and Crisco, lard, no, and Crisco. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We do. We, our mother was Greek. We use olive oil. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Especially if you're Greek, that's right. Or you can use to do your hair. That's right. Multi purpose. That's right. You can do a lot This is looking great. Lard was easy and free. All right, so. Good work. Run Father Charles to death today. Not intending to do so. So, this has softened. I don't know if you all can smell. You should be able to smell the bell pepper. So this is soft enough. So now all I'm going to do is add <clears throat> one can of crushed tomatoes, any kind you want, 28 ounce, the great big one. I'm going to pour this in here. I'm going to stir this around. And then this particular recipe, if you've looked at the paper over there, it does call for three ripe tomatoes or three fresh tomatoes. They're out of season, and I don't like to use out of season tomatoes. So if I make this in the winter or fall, the tomatoes are out of season. I just get another can of like petite diced tomatoes instead. This particular one happened to have garlic and olive oil in it. So we're going to use this as well. And I'm just going to pour these in. Get it. Two for one. Yep. Stir this around a little bit. Just mix it together. And this this will be thick like this. And I'm only going to partially cover it because I want that liquid to, to boil off of it. And because when you eat this and I serve it to you, 
I'm just going to hand you bread, and you're going to pick off what you want, and you eat it that way. Oh. <clears throat> so this is, you know, most Mediterranean food is eaten with the hands. And so we're, that's what I do. Now, if you want to use a fork, I'm not going to stop you from doing it. I won't do like what, I won't do to you what my grandmother did to me if I did something wrong and she didn't like in the kitchen and got white with a wooden spoon. <laughs> Well, that's against safe church policy. Right. So. <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> Two more things I'm going to do real quick. On this. I did not bring my mortar and pestle on purpose. This is going to have a little bit of spice, very little bit of spice. I'm going to take some and what is this? red pepper. It's just crushed red pepper. Okay. No, no frills, crushed red pepper. And I'm going to put a few flakes in here. Just going to use two spoons, okay. just to release the heat. All right. Because has, any, has anybody has anybody ever done this with their hands and their eye itched? Yeah. You, you mace yourself. It's great. Mace yourself. Mace yourself. You, you've That's sarcasm, it. isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. And all you're doing wow. is just pushing it down. So you just crush it with two spoons. Yes. Yeah, with two spoons. Show me that again. The tip. Yeah, you can do the tip or the heel, whichever okay. one you want to. Want to do, and I just use my thumbs and just squish them, push them down. They're not going to crush, crush, but they're going to pop yeah. Yeah. and release. So I'm just going to add this over here for a little bit of heat, so just a little bit. With the, the Is this shit and then can you hand me the, the spice right there? Sure. Okay. okay. And then this then spice like is what I'm going to put. Now this you do not have to use this. This mm -hmm. is optional, but it's called Ross El Hanout, and it is a Mediterranean spice. It comes out of oh. northern. Africa, I believe. Um, you can get it. On, I, I had to order it from online. I don't know if you can get it locally or not. It's possible. They're the ingredients. And if you smell it. Oh, wow. <laughs> smell cam. Right? Oh. Sniff cam. <laughs> but it is can, we, a, can we just pass that around? Oh, they already, they've already sniffed it. Wow. Well, oh. yeah. I was last. You were last. Yeah. I was too. <laughs> but see, I was last to the show. So. Yeah. And I'm going to add probably about a teaspoon of this because a little excuse me a little goes a long way and not everybody like maybe likes the taste of cumin or coriander oh. so I just add it to give it a little bit of flavor so I'm going to add a teaspoon now and then just before this gets finished I'm going to add probably another half a teaspoon now why do you do it in two different times? okay so if I, if I add it now and I cook it with this what's going to happen is a lot of those spices with going to do what they're supposed to do is absorb into the taste, right. but you'll lose some others that maybe aren't as strong. So maybe about two, three, after I put the eggs in, but just before I put the eggs in, as a matter of fact, I'll probably put in another half a teaspoon. And then all I'm going to do is simmer this for about 20 minutes. And you just put one can? I, yeah. I, the reason I opened this second one here was if I, I'm going to let this go for about 10 minutes, I'm going to look at it. If it's too thick, I'll add a little bit more. Otherwise, okay. what I'll do is I'll pour that into a Ziploc bag and freeze it. Okay. Looks like your assistance is done. Okay. Cool. There's leftover cream cheese. Uh-oh. Now, nobody fight. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. she'll taste test her. That's right. So, this will be the fun part of this right here. This is basically, I think we've already shown this, I can't remember, but this is just a cup of, Linda, were you looking at Dorn's here, there's a spatula? I want to make sure that this doesn't stick. Is this? Perfect, yep, that'll work. I just need something other than this loose. <clears throat> Great job, Kate. There we go. And then this just pours over the top, so it's going to be, of course, butter first. And then the caramel. Mm. It's just butter and brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And what I do like to do after I do this, remember what I said that was called? Do you remember? Scraping the good. Scraping the good. Scraping the good. Mm -hmm. You left my grandmother in the kitchen fit. You left the good in that. I don't know what you mean when you say good. Okay. And then what I'll do after that. I'm going to take a little bit more cinnamon, just on the top. You ever use nutmeg? I, I do. Nutmeg is another one of those spices that 
can be great in the right amount, raw, and it can be rough in, in the wrong time. Just tilt your ball. Just a little bit. Now, I did not spray this with anything because this is really super nonstick. But if you have any Baker's Joy or any kind of vegetable spray or anything like that, and a little flour because okay. you just poured a cup of brown sugar and butter on top of this, so this is going to set up like concrete okay. in here. So all I'm going to do at this point is stick this in a 350 degree oven. 350. 350. For, oh, 20 minutes. And we'll look at it in 20 minutes. Set a timer. Okay, Google. <laughs> Set a timer for 20 minutes. Or not. Oh, I haven't turned off. <laughs> She's talking to me right in here. Yeah. Everything is simmering. I keep this handy. If anybody would like to sprinkle some over the top, you can do. Okay. okay. Getting out the excess sugar. <laughs> there you go. So I don't now, let anything go to waste. So yeah. is shek shuka? Shek shuka. Shek shuka. Uh huh. Uh, is this served hot or? It is served warm. Yes. It is so, served warm. Yeah. What I'll do is after this is simmered down and reduced for a bit, um, what I'm going to do? There's eggs or something over here. I'm going to crack. How many do I have? One, two, three. Oh, perfect. That's going to be perfect. I'm going to crack about eight eggs in them, just like it shows in the picture right there. And we're going to poach these. Now, I'm going to poach them until they're done. You can poach them however you want. If you want to, like if you want them over medium, over easy, over what, however you're going to do it. And when I say done, I'm not, I mean, they're not going to be like rubber. They're just, they need to soak. And, oh, and get that the taste. flavor. Yeah, yeah, because when you go to serve it with your bread, if you, I, I've learned this just from experience, if you if you do like the over, what do they call it, over medium or the yellow is running, <laughs> it can be a little visually unappealing. Uh -huh. oh. Hey, it'll taste good. It, it looks great, and then you cut into it, and, and it, it runs it, yeah, and it, you know, people, it's a little off-putting if you're not used to that kind of thing. So I'll cook them until they're about over, just a little bit between over medium and over hard. Just, just enough. Kind of like what is it? Uh, when you boil an egg, you boil them for about nine to ten minutes. Ten, nine to ten or eleven. You just want that yolk done. Now, this is showing a iron skillet. Do you have to use an iron skillet? Nope. You sure don't. Okay. It helps okay. because it cooks more evenly. But no, you don't. You can use anything you want. Just it's it's all stovetop. So just make sure whatever you use is fairly shallow. Because if it's too deep, the eggs will get up, will get hard on top. Um, but when you, when you cover them, it'll steam and it will make the top of the egg kind of kind of rubbery, and then hmm. kind of hard. Interesting. Mm -hmm. If that's not your particular preference of how things are going to taste, we can do it that way. Now another thing I've done too with switching back to the Gorilla Bread is with the cream cheese if you if you wish to you can soften your cream cheese and mix this in with your cream cheese there the cinnamon sugar in with the cream cheese and put that in the center as well as on the outside or you can use flavored cream cheese i've done one with strawberry i've done i've used chocolate i've used like a hershey's a half hershey's kiss and then we love them, whatever you want to do with it that the, the good thing about using refrigerated biscuits like that is that it's very forgiving and what you put in it, you don't have to really worry about flavors colliding or anything. Huh. And this you just stir occasionally. You should be able to smell. Can't smell right now because appliances. So how much does this cook down, or you want to keep it, it watery? It will probably cook down. This it'll be fairly thick. It probably won't. It'll probably be the consistency of a thick chili. Ah, okay. Yeah, of a thicker chili, because there's no meat in it at all. It's a vegetarian dish. Ah, okay. So uh, I mean, you can now you can make that and cook whatever you want on top of it. This is traditional, more traditional. With the eggs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you have people that are vegetarian, or if they're vegan, 
um, just instead of chopping the bell pepper, uh, just have them and clean out the insides oh. and put those on top with, if you want to use vegan cheese, you can use vegan cheese. Um, somebody else said that they did that with uh, uh, zucchini. Oh, just get okay. like a big zucchini and cut like coins, thick yep. coins. You can do the same thing. It's just uh, uh, these are really universal. So roughly, what is the cooking time? Um, from start to finish with the shakshuka, it's probably going to be about forty-five minutes. Okay. I think that I think the instructions there say thirty to forty minutes cooking, but this is gas, so gas doesn't cook as slowly as electric. Because electric heat is on off on off on off on off. Gas is pretty consistent, so I don't have gas. Anymore. Oh, that's it a good. Takes point. About an hour at my house, but here it's probably going to take about. I don't know. You know, that's a great point, uh, Jason. You know, most people have either electric and stove tops now that are glass. Yep. And you're you're right that that element comes on and off. Yep. Uh, within frequency, like gas is consistent. It's it's. it's I, I used to make uh, at Christmas. I used to make candy for people all the time. All the time. When I was in college, we had a gas stove. And I could go in there and make 40, 50 pounds of divinity and taffy and honeycomb and peanut brittle and all this kind of stuff. I can't make any of it to save my life at my apartment because I have an electric stove. Because the heat will kick on and the temperature will go up and then it kicks off and it drops. And that really messes with your sugar. <laughs> well, yeah, no It kidding. really messes with your sugar. Are you making caramel? If you're trying to make caramel? I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. It'll be the same thing. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's not impossible to do. It takes a lot of practice and the correct environmental conditions. Wow. But well, that's why a lot of industrial restaurants use gas. Yes. The consistent I just did not, I did not. Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but they are pearls of wisdom. But you're right. It's a, a circle. Well, most people, but depending on your gas range, sometimes your element isn't always giving the proper amount of gas out. Like our old range here at the church, it was infrequent that the pilot would go on and off. So you'd have to check the pilot most of the time while you were cooking. Or just need to dry my hands. It's going to start smelling very cinnamony in here in a minute. Is it about that time? Has it been 20 minutes? Well, uh, 15 minutes. No. Is it? <laughs> Cinnamon sugar and cream cheese. What a delight. <laughs> I don't know if your doctor would approve. <laughs> Most of the stuff I've made in these classes, most doctors probably wouldn't approve yeah. of. Well, but he's going to snatch it up. I try. Right? Well, anytime you have butter, it's, you know, a cholesterol thing, right? Well, Arteries. And, but I, I, have, I have told people this a lot. My, my grandparents grew up on butter, they grew up on lard, and all this kind of stuff. And they lived well into their 80s, but it was a different time. They worked. Yeah. And I had a friend of mine was like, my grandparents used to be hungry, they did that every day. Right. You sit behind a computer 14 and a half hours a day. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. And then your thing of bacon Yes. Yes. With the, with the 15 layers of aluminum foil that they refused to throw away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because during, was it during World War II, you have to ration everything. You have to keep everything. That's right, your aluminum. And she, I can remember my grandma would pitch a fit. I, I don't remember what I did. Oh, I, was, I pulled out a piece of aluminum foil that was too small. 
for a nine by thirteen pen, and I was wadded up and filled and she grabbed <clears> my hand. And, no, and she unwadded that and put it on top of her baking grease container. Wow. <laughs> Hers was a Folgers yeah. coffee can. She kept it in the refrigerator. Well, actually, she kept yeah. one in the refrigerator and one side stove, and that's where everything went. There's a podcast I like to watch. It's called Cooking with Bacon. And it's uh, <laughs> it's these two ladies, uh, and they, they tell you how to preserve your bacon grease. Yeah. It's just phenomenal. I just, I've never seen such a thing. How to preserve your bacon grease, yeah. Well, I mean, you just can't leave it on your counter, because if you don't use it often enough, it'll mold. Yeah. So you have to refrigerate sometimes, and you have to take it out to soften it, and blah blah blah. <laughs> so. But they have some great recipes, some country, uh, country cooking recipes. So it's really fun. The art of untwisting the twisty. Which sometimes they'll go forward and back and forward again. Yeah, it's never, it's just the oddest thing. I guess they want to just be sure that it's fresh. Yeah. So we're cutting our bread. I'm just going to slice slice this bread. This is going to be for Mr. Chuka. When you eat it, you're supposed to dip it like you would a curry. You can use pita bread. You can, I've served it with naan. Do you like naan? Oh. Okay. You can do it. Yeah, just really any kind of bread because it's really it's gonna be thick. All I'm doing here, y'all, just cutting this bread up. This is how you're gonna eat your shakshuka. So no utensils. Unless you want to, it's only up to you. I'm not gonna. I am not allowed under the church safe practices thing to wipe the wood spoon. Not that I would. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Well, I was going to do that too, but I, I, my experience with that is I'm really bad at that, so I'll pull it and half a loaf will come with me, and then everybody else gets like these little ratty pieces of crumb. So, do we need no plates? You want to well, grab plates? Most of the time they're like, oh, here, just hold on to it. Okay, whatever you they're in there. It's kind of like a wishbone. Whatever you wind up with is what you get. I'm holding it. They'll pull, and I'm left with two-thirds of a loaf of bread. You just have to... Huh? I'll just pass it around. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, Walmart's dollar bread... Ooh, look at that. Just thickening. Yep, and you can see it cooking down. Mm-hmm. Took it down. I'm going to add a little bit more. One dollar and a quarter. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that. So I get up there and tell them, like, wait a minute. Oh yeah, I love the dollar store. Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree. If you get there early enough, when holiday stuff coming in, and this is just salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Okay. Sure, you need much longer. I'll crack the eggs in there. And how long would that take? You think? Um, about ten, fifteen minutes, maybe at most. Okay. I wouldn't say it would take much longer than that. Because really, all you're doing is just trying not to overcook, overcook the egg. Yeah. Or you really, I mean, that's like I was saying earlier, you can cook it to whatever, whatever thickness you like. Mm-hmm. Or thickness, whatever thickness you like. Over medium, over medium, over gotcha. I have actually known of people that they don't like to actually crack the eggs in it. They prefer boiled, hard boiled. Oh. So I was going to say, do you poach them separately and then lay them in? Yeah. Okay. Or um, the, a friend of mine, his mother would make it. She would partially, excuse me, she would partially hard boil the eggs and then take them out of the water and put them in the shakshuka. And then when she served it, you just had to remember to cut the eggs. Oh. I didn't. I forgot one time. That was. <laughs> 
Egg shell everywhere. Yeah. You got your, I was going to say calcium. <laughs> you can see it's starting to cook. So that's probably going to need about 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, our oven hasn't been cooking yet, too. Well, I found out, so this oven is 10 degrees cold. So I cook it on 365 for 350. Uh, this one, I used this one one time, and it was, I think this one was pretty true. Okay. Pretty close to it. Okay. But this one, to get 350, I have to put it on 365. Oh. Yeah. The, the, the top. I got pepper up and I was, I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, I don't have cooties. I have pepper. Woo. I was going to say, what do we have to drink? I forgot to come down here and make one. So we have lemonade. Lemonade. Water and coffee. Okay. Jim likes lemonade. Water. <laughs> All right. So how many eggs, Jason, are you going to put in? Well, um, this is going to work out just right. I usually put between six and eight. Six to eight eggs? Six to eight. If you're serving more people, oh, sure. you can get a bigger skillet. Um, and you can, by the way, if you don't want to do it stovetop, you can do it in the oven. You just have to be really careful not to burn it. Oh. It, uh, it, you, you can make it in an hour 13 pan in the oven. 350, I want to say you let it go for like... You, you, you still do your uh, onions and garlic and your bell pepper on the top to soften them. But you, then you pour everything into a 9 by 13 or whatever size pan you want to use. And you stick it in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes okay. for it to cook down. And then you add the eggs so it takes longer than you have to. But you can still do it in the oven. Okay. And I'm not going to need this. I'm going to set this over here. Okay. So if y'all want to come over here and look, you can see the consistency. It's hard to see over there. You're kind of looking at a thick, thickish sort of fresh spaghetti sauce. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was like a spaghetti sauce. Oh, that smell. Yeah. Now, before I add that... Yeah, I sent them to... I actually emailed them to the church yesterday, so they'll probably come out and... This week's uh, weekend update. Weekend update. We'll have a separate PDF for each recipe. Recipe section. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to add about another half a teaspoon of the spice. Okay. Wow, you can smell that monkey bread <laughs> or gorilla bread, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Maybe half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. I'm going to stir this in. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this point, now, this may be the only come stand. Oh, okay. So you can see what I'm going to do. Now, you don't have to do this. I do this just because it makes it a little easier for me to kind of count the number of people. I'm going to get a small ladle. And I'm just going to make a small divot. Oh, great idea. If it will hold. Sometimes if it's too hot, it may not hold. But you just want a little bit of a hole, and that's where my egg is going to go. And that kind of gives me an idea about how many to... How many people do I have? One, two, three, eight, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. How many people? Exactly. The eggs don't have to be a particular temperature. They can be colder. It doesn't matter. At this point, all we're shooting for is consistency. And so this is the trick that I learned. Break the egg in the label. In the ladle, and you flip it over. <coughs> oh, 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 look at you! I love that because mine usually just go. Yeah, all over me too. Just the question is, how good are you with one hand? 
There you go. Would you like someone to hold the weight? Well, yeah. These eggshells are really thin, and they don't want to break. And it's going to come apart in like little pieces. Come on. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 fail. All right, let me go. That's to fail. <laughs> so yeah, if somebody could hold the label. Normally, when okay. I was at home and I forgot to do it, because I label holder, I crack my eggs in a bowl and dip them up. Uh, uh, do it on that one. There you go. Back right there. Yep. Push down. There you go. So it's a buddy system right here. If we all don't have a sous chef. There you go. Just flip it over. Yep. There you go. Takes a little practice. Just like that. Hold it. Push down. There you go. I'll show you how to lift this thing here. So what you'll do is, is, since you're standing that way, there you go, turn it towards you and flip it over. There you go. You do. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Just like that. One, two. In theory, the, the, the monkey bread's done. I don't think it's done yet. It looked a little suspect. We'll give it a second here. One, two, three, four. I can, but these eggs have really thin shells. The first one you did there before. Well, that's a handy way to do it. There you go. It's a great skill. Here you go. Where is uh, it? I came late to the party. Did you have to grease the. Oh, it works? No. Nothing? No. You just so use it just like that. Because yeah. you're pushing it down that liquid. Uh huh. This whole week. Oh, oh, oh. Lift yeah. that light lamp. Yeah. 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 Well, she must not agree on all because she's needed. I didn't see that. Do you hate that when it happens? Yeah. Do you need a spoon? Actually, I shell attack shell. Pull that up. She was on call. We'll pull the label up out of the liquid. Whenever she's on call, she's going to be on call. I'll talk us through this one. Yeah, what is so? Uh, well, i got to find it first. It's got a hidden under There it is. So a piece of shell, if you stick it down in there, we'll pull the shell up. Oh my gosh, I did not know that. I think I got it. If I didn't, I apologize whoever gets crunchy yet. A little extra calcium. And then let's do a little bit off center. So let's see here. That's three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do eight. 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 We made fries out of the <laughs> There you go. I'm just going to put the lid on the top of the horse. Okay, now. Stick it in. We're going to let that go for just a few minutes. Okay. And we want to Maybe a salad and salad. Well, you can smell that monkey bread. Yeah, that's why that's, I'm ready to check on the alarm. Went off when we were cracking eggs, so I don't want it to burn. Is that on the right extensions there? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's done. So what are you looking at? And I'm just looking to see if I see any wet dough. Okay. Really? That's kind of what I'm looking for. Of course, I can't see what's underneath it, but it's covered in butter, and so it's probably not going to cook, cook, but it, you'll be done. I just don't want anybody to bite into a big old piece of biscuit dough. Although, how bad could it be? It'll have a big chunk of cream cheese in it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, I'll eat it on his elbow. Cream so cheese, yes, normally when I pull this out, I'm little, you let it sit for just a little bit because you want that caramel to harden so when you flip it over, it doesn't explode on contact with the plate. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just leave it to kind of chill for a minute over here so nobody burns. And then this should be done in a few minutes. And then we can eat if you wanted to, could you chill it in the refrigerator faster? You can. What I would do is if you stick it, like you can make it the night before and cover it, 
what I would do when you get ready to serve it is boil a pan of like get boiling hot water and stick it down in there for maybe two or three minutes to loosen that sugar up so when you turn it out, it'll turn. It turns, yeah. mm -hmm. That's a great idea. <clears throat> You know, one of the things, Jason, that I've really appreciated about these classes is some of the techniques, cooking techniques, not just the recipes that have been really great, but the uh, the techniques that you've shared with us for cooking, Different ways of like using an eggshell to get another eggshell out. Yeah. I would never well, have thought I can't of take care of that. I ordered that from Rachel Ray. Ah, <laughs> is that right? Because I got so sick, everybody does, trying to fish the stupid little piece of eggshell out. And she said, remember that shell attracts shell. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It sure does. You get to your piece about the end of the tip of your finger, and you get down in there, and it just grabs onto it and lifts right out. I've used yeah. it ever since. See, every, and every chef has different yes, techniques, just like our grandparents mm -hmm. always did or mothers. And that's where mothers. chefs learn their stuff is by watching other people do stuff. Um, if there's like this really tiny piece um, in like the egg when I'm making scrambled eggs. What I'll do is I take <coughs> one and a half of the craft eggs and then one of the and then I scoop it up. I put my finger on the little shell and just pour out the yeah. just have whatever whatever tip I know or trick that you find that works for you, do it. Because yeah. I've I told people lots of times People are like, well, you're doing that wrong in the kitchen. No there are like certain things that you can do incorrectly that will cause whatever it is you're trying to do not to, like a souffle. Don't open the door to look at a souffle. It will fall. <laughs> it will not re-rise. Oh. It will collapse, and it will be collapsed. And so a friend of mine was like, well, how do you know if a souffle is done? It's an egg. Uh -huh. Eggs rise. When it rises up and it looks like it's not wet on top anymore, it's probably done. But as soon as you take it out, you better be ready to serve it. Oh. Because it will collapse. That egg will lose its heat and it will collapse down to the center. Because remember <laughs> back when we were making, um, what was the very first thing that I made? I'm drawing totally uh, But we were talking about what I was adding to something and I'm like, eggs are a raising agent because eggs puff up when they cook. It's a raising agent that causes things to rise up. And so you add things, leavening agents in there to keep the rise from going too high. A souffle has no leavening in it. That's why they just puff up. It's all egg. It's gonna, that's all it's going to do is puff up. But when you add things like salt or baking powder or baking soda or something like that, you're adding agents in there that are going to counteract one another. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeast, of course, is a raising agent. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to rise. But some people will, if they don't want it to rise too much, they'll add salt, which is a leavening agent, which will kill some of that action oh. of the yeast keep it from, I mean, you know, that bread is really great, but if they hadn't put salt in it to leaven it out, it could have been that puppy, you know, depending on how much yeast they use. See, this is why I should have paid attention in my home economics class <laughs> in high school. Well, and you know, it's like, and, oh yeah. Wow, the boys got home economics? I learned how to use a sewing machine. I don't know. I don't know how to, I'm the one who darns socks in my house. <laughs> now, here's another trick. So, do you see how the top of it's my egg is starting to kind of stick to the top of my of my lid because my lid is kind of flat and that pan is kind of full. Take two spoons. Oh, lay one here. Lay one on one side and one on another, and that's just going to lift your lid up just enough to keep it from well, it'll lying. Also, it'll also lift the spoons. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, yeah. I never would have thought of that. Yeah, or you can, if you don't want to use spoons, you can use like the, the uh, back bottom of the tube. I mean, it doesn't have to come up very high. You just don't want it to stick to the, yeah. stick to the top. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. <laughs> I would never have thought of that. Yeah, but you have to be careful. <laughs> Another story from my childhood. You have to be very careful if you use spoons because if you're not paying any attention, you're seven years old and you're turning through your grandmother's kitchen and she has spoons sticking out and you're running through with your hands in the air and you catch the spoons, you ruin lunch. Uh oh. <laughs> not good. Uh, I, the story I want to tell about my I love my grand my, my grandparents were not bad people. They were they were just they were grandparents that were a different era type thing. 
And when I was a kid growing up, my grandmother used to stay with her during the day. We lived in this old farmhouse that did not have air conditioning. And she had this sewing room off of the living room in her house. It had a divan in it. You know what a divan is? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was tweed. A divan is sort of like a day bed. And the cushions could lay down. You could lay on it like a like a sofa yeah. with that cushion on the back. It was made out of orange tweed. And this room was off, the, was off the west side of our house. And every afternoon after we had lunch, I had to go take a nap. I was not allowed out of that room. And she had a window fan, but it was turned the other way to blow the heat out of the room. Blow the heat out of the room. West facing. I can remember laying there in the middle of summer and the sweat. <laughs> yeah. and oh, my gosh. For three hours. Oh, oh, it was wow. awful. I remember just laying there thinking how much I hated that brother that saw it. No, I had to get I had to get I couldn't figure out why until I turned 13. And that's when Days of Our Lives in Another World in Santa Barbara were on. Oh. oh. Did you get to watch it? No. No, I did not. Now, but by the time I got to that age, they had, they had already moved into a house that was next door to where I grew up. Like a house with air conditioning and stuff in it. And the only reason that I was allowed to watch it then was because she didn't think I needed to be out in that kind of heat. And now she didn't think I needed to be out in that kind of heat. Yeah. 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 And I, that's it. You were young. <laughs> Oh. And no air conditioning. Oh. Attic. <laughs> well, we, I had a great uncle and a great aunt that lived in Detroit. And every so often we would go visit, we'd go up to visit them. And they didn't have air conditioning in their house, but their house was always cool. And it never made any sense. I mean, it didn't get as hot in Detroit as it does down here. They have some pretty warm days and it was still comfortable. And one afternoon, Uncle Al took me. He's like, well, I'll show you why. And they had a root cellar. And they had an attic fan with a swamp cooler in the top of it. It would pull that cool air up and catch that horse hair that was in that swamp cooler, which would cause that cold air to circulate through the house. Yeah, they I used those. That, I don't remember it then. Oh. I, I probably in the summer had another little room, but I loved it in the winter. Mm-hmm. It had stained glass windows in the attic. Oh. And the, cool. Old Victorian. You get the pigeons out there. We're about to get there. They're getting there. Yep. You need to rotate. It looks like yeah. I hate. Need a hot pad. My heat's on one side. I'm rotating. I know she had your football. Yeah, uh, I grabbed this out of here. Good job. So. Now, how many? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Kansas City. Kansas, Kansas City, City and, and the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm not partial. I just like the Chiefs much better. Do you all remember? Oh, it's, it's like, yeah. Did you? Do you all remember? It was years ago. I think it was a Snickers. I think it was a Snickers commercial. And you could see it was a Super Bowl commercial, and you could see the guy, the groundskeeper, out there. He was painstakingly making sure that the yard lines were painted and the end zones were painted. I mean, it was, you could see the sun, like it started at the beginning, you could see the sun come up early in the morning, it went to the middle of the day, and toward the end of the day, you could see him practicing on the field that he just painted, and he got down, and he stood up, and he was wiping his brow, and one of the guys walked by, and he was like, man, you did a really great job, but who are the chefs? And you pan out, and it was supposed to say Chiefs, and you forgot the eye. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Too funny. Oh, did you go see that movie? It's cute. Is it's it a cute movie? Yeah. And I don't know what Jane Fonda does. I swear she looks like she's about 35. She's 85. Is she really? That's amazing. Well, that would be, yeah. you know, Now, you all did know that Lily Tomlin had an aunt that, was, that lived, yeah, yeah. lived in the center. I sat yes. next to Lily Tomlin's nephew. And she'd come down a couple times a year and just... Mm-hmm. It's her favorite aunt. She lived in the, uh, the life care center in the center. I met her one time. My grandfather was down here. He had Alzheimer's disease, and, and they had we had him in there. She was there one time, and I met her. I didn't. I don't think I knew who she really who she was at the time. And then some years later, we were watching some old reruns of um, Laughing, and she was doing Ernestine. Yeah. And that I'm like, I know that. Like, no, or but I mean, like, I know who that is now. It didn't dawn on me at first. Yeah, I sat next to her. I think it was her nephew. Discussion on the airplane. Yeah, he gets. 
Okay, let's see how <laughs> let's see how this goes. Okay, gotta get a Hail Mary in. Oh, 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 I heard pop. Hard posture pop. Hold on. Got one side of the man. No. Mm. Nope. Give it up. Yay. Now, before it gets cold, you got to. The goods. Yeah, you got to scrape the good out of there. So that's the part that you want. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he did a great job, didn't he? Because it's, it is like a cardinal sandal at this part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody sent me some years ago a, a thing that was the, the, the 10 unforgivable sins of a, of a kitchen. And one of them was letting anything with cinnamon and brown sugar go to waste. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so that's so the ghoul is the is the Italian sort of a, a it's a modified Italian word for the heel of bread. Okay. They call it the ghoul. The mm -hmm. That's the heel of bread. Okay. What we call it. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. Oh, oh. And you might want to look up and see how it's spelled. I think it, I want to say it's like G. It's spelled odd. It's not, G spelled so it's like, not like the ghost. Not, not like the ghost. I think yeah. it's like G O I. Like how they say, like they say, oil for oil, oil. Mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. or uh, and not oil, um, garlic. Okay. Oil. They say oil, but it's spelled like A I L. I think okay. it's something like that. It's like G O I H L or something. Okay. You'll have to do a little research. That's all right. I got a million books on food lore because I did that for the home place. So. so this research book, I've got food lore coming okay. in my ears. <laughs> you can't eat it if you don't cut it. Oh, God. Let's see what we got. So it's not really... So you don't... Oh, yeah, you can. I was just going to see how, how easily it pulled apart. Sometimes you kind of have to cut it. But there you go. You can see the cream mm. cheese. If you would like to partake, by all means, please do. Just don't burn your fingers. It's a little on the hot side. Okay. This should be done here in just a minute. I've got to grab my spoon. Oh, yeah. yeah we're getting there. That. Give it another minute or two. I don't want to overcook them, but I also don't want to worry. Yeah, be careful. Don't. Burn your fingers. Burn your fingers. Yeah, that's like you get you a fork. Extra silver. There you go. Forks. Oh, paper towels. They're up above. Other side, right here. We have a note from somebody, one of our live viewers here. It says, hey, Jason, yeah. I've been watching each week even though I can't be there. Okay. It's been fun to see everyone and watch you and your cooking okay. tricks. Explanation. Awesome. It's kept me uh, connected and helped me to still feel a part of things. Well, that's the point. That's what cooking does. By the way, go Eagles. Oh, okay. <laughs> We, I love you anyway. <laughs> I uh, don't know. Um, I can't identify. Well, I I can, but I have to get out of the the feed. So. 
I'm trying to make sure everybody had some. This is phenomenal. Yes. But this. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is one of those things that kind of came into existence on a Christmas mm. morning when I forgot that I was Sorry. supposed to take something. Mm. Mm. And all I had was cream cheese and candy biscuits. <laughs> well, you did well. Mm -hmm. So this is your innovation? Well, I, in a way. Now, I, I believe uh, Paula Dean made something similar to this, but I think she used um, pancakes. Or like, you know, the little frozen mini pancakes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is good. <laughs> Definitely not that somebody is... that is looking to cut calories. Absolutely not. You didn't have to say that. Well. But see, the beautiful thing about this is there's no preservatives. That's right. So if you're... Come on. I've been trying to cut back on my uh, processed sugars. <laughs> Now, um, I have also made these with pressure bowls and pizza dough. Like pizza the, dough? Like the refrigerator, you know, the, the pizza dough? Mm -hmm. It does the same rise, you just don't have to cook it as long. Uh -huh. Ooh, I think we're getting close. I think we're good to go. Oh, yeah. Now, look at that. I wonder how that would be with the top pastry. Well, you like it. Try to see? Yeah. And it's football mitten. Well, there we go. Now the shakshuk is done. I'm going to let it sit because it's still boiling. <laughs> I'm going to let it sit for a minute or two just to cool. But so that the folks at home can see it, I'm going to serve some. Yeah, because we're almost out of time. And I apologize you all who are online right now that we started a little late. We had our annual meeting today, and things uh, uh, had an, a uh, vestry meeting really quick after church, and so we're a little behind uh, today than we normally would have been. And Jason has been so kind to help us learn a little bit more about cooking. Shashuka. Shashuka. So that's basically what you got here. Wow, look at that. And then all you do is get you a piece of crusty bread. And there you go. And that's it. Wow. Thank you so much, Jason. You're welcome. God bless you and may God bless our Shashuka <laughs> and our gorilla bread. Thank you all for joining us who are online. It's been a joy. Have a blessed afternoon. And a happy Sunday.